Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Mark on RC Nerd 74 and in today's episode of my RC Scrappy build I'm gonna go through all the details of modifying the three blade prop I use, the carbon spinner, then some modifications on the airflow on the fuselage and all the mods I had to do on the elevator and rudder. As always, the target is to come as close as possible to the look of full-scale Scrappy. I know that I used a three-blade prop instead of a four-blade prop. The reason for this is I didn't find a four-blade prop I really like for the setup of this plane. So I decided to go for a three-blade prop. So let's jump right into the details and have a closer look. The three blade prop I used for this build is from AliExpress. It's not an expensive prop, it's around $35. And I was a bit concerned when I ordered it about the quality. The prop is absolutely not balanced when you get it from the factory. You also have the center part which is not shaped perfectly identical on all three sides. And the drill hole, the center hole is also a bit too tight to make the prop run perfectly smooth on the prop shaft. So I had to do some modifications on the prop. First of all, I tried to do a simple balance. So I sanded off some paint just to check if I can easily balance the prop. This worked so far, but when I did the first spin test and pull test, the power of the prop was okay, but I recognized some vibrations, so it was clear that the prop wasn't still perfectly balanced. Another issue I figured out on the prop is that the blade track is not uh, aligned, so I had to sand the center area of the prop to get a perfect uh, blade track. After sanding and a short check, that was absolutely perfect. To solve the issue of the center part, which is not the same thickness of material on all three areas between the blades, I had to make a template out of cardboard to copy the shape of the thinnest area of the three areas to all the other areas. Like this, I was able to sand down the other two areas, which were too thick, too much material on the center area down to the exact same shape as the thinnest part. Like this, the prop was way better balanced, but still not okay. So after sanding down the whole paint and sanding all the center areas, I had to rebalance the whole prop. And after some sanding and balancing again, the prop was really perfectly balanced. And on another uh, spin test, the noise of the prop was absolutely perfect and smooth and no more vibrations. For the first thrust check I wanted to do on the prop, I changed the connector of the pretty bad uh, stock ESC to my Hobbywing ESC just to make sure that everything works fine during the pull test. And I compared the stock prop, the two blade prop, plastic prop versus the three blade wooden prop. The wooden prop pulls around 4.3, 4.4 kilograms and the two blade plastic prop is around 3.8, 3.9 kilograms. Around 500 grams more thrust on the wooden prop so I think the additional weight the plane will have will be handled pretty easy with this motor and prop combination. The carbon spinner I use on RC Scrappy is also from AliExpress and as usual this wasn't also balanced at all. The first thing I did is I did some modifications on the back plate. The back plate is super strong, it's uh, overkill in case of strength and weight. So I decided to drill some holes into the back plate. For this I first drilled a bunch of tiny holes to remove all the sections and then file down the sections to a perfect shape. So I have six big holes in the back plate which reduces the weight of the back plate. Then I also had to balance the back plate and did some sanding on the existing holes and like this I was able to balance the back plate perfectly. 
Then I had to do the same on the spinner. I sanded the spinner from the inside to reduce the weight of the spinner on the heaviest side. And like this also used my Dubro balancer to balance all these parts. In the end, I had a perfectly balanced prop and spinner. This spinner came without any holes for the prop plates. So I also had to cut and sand the holes for the prop plates. This was a bit tricky, but I think the final result looks pretty okay. Then I did some slight changes on the fuselage foam on the front end, on the cowling end. This was just to increase the airflow inside the cowling, also inside the fuselage. The top air intake on the cowling is not working when you just do the air intake on the cowling, but no change on the fuselage. So I sanded down the top part of the stock cowling area and like this I sanded a tunnel into the foam, did the same thing on the canopy part, removed the stock mount which I didn't use anymore because of my custom cowling which keeps the canopy in place. Sanded also a tunnel inside the canopy foam part and like this I got a nice open area on the top of the cowling and the airflow perfectly goes through the canopy top air intake through this tunnel into the fuselage. A similar shape I sanded on the bottom side on the sides of the stock canopy area. This also increases the airflow which goes through the air outlets on both sides of the custom carbon cowling. Then it was time to care about all the modifications on rudder and elevator and both stabilizers. One target was that I have more travel range for rudder and elevator. And the other thing was that uh, full scale scrappy has stabilizer bars which uh, reinforce the horizontal stabilizer. That was perfect to do this modification because the stock installation of the horizontal stabilizer is pretty loose. With this modification I was able to solve the issue from the factory and at the same time I was able to build the stabilizers with a nice scale look. First step was to remove the stock suspension of the tailwheel. This is no more needed because of the carbon suspension and tailwheel of RC Scrappy and also full scale Scrappy. Then I also wanted to replace the stock hinges. There are three different reasons. First is that the stock hinges have some drag if you do extreme travel ranges, extreme angles on your rudders and the hinges I use have absolutely no drag no matter how much travel you have. Second reason is that they were pretty bad installed on one of the elevators so the elevator was absolutely not aligned to the horizontal stabilizer. And the third reason is that they are disassemblable. If you have to do some repairs or you want to put on another paint shop, it's pretty easy to disassemble these hinges and take apart the rudder from the stabilizer and the elevator from the stabilizer and makes a new paint job or new foil wrapping way easier than with fixed installed rudder and elevator. So first I simply cut it off the open half of the hinges, of the stock hinges, but I wasn't happy with this solution because half of the hinge was still in the rudder and in the elevator. So I decided to remove them completely with a hobby knife, cut it into the rudder, into the elevator, and pulled out the stock hinges so I have a clean rudder and clean elevator to install the new hinges. To change the position of the wrong installed stock installation to a perfectly aligned level, I filled the gaps of the stock hinges with some thin uh, XPS foam parts, glued them in with other less uh, CA glue, cut it off the excess, sanded it all down then cut the new slots for the custom hinges. Like this, I have a perfectly aligned elevator on both sides. 
Another thing which is just for the look is that the 90 degree angled reinforcements on the elevator and rudder from stock these are too thick so these stand a little bit off of the surface of the rudder and elevator so I pull them out of the rudder and the elevator sand them down to a thinner shape and glued them back in with U-Pore. Like this, I have a perfectly aligned surface, a clean, smooth surface of rudder and elevator. Then I try to reduce the foam structure surface a little bit, so I sanded all the surface of rudder and elevator with 240 grit sandpaper. We will see how much it will affect the final look, but I hope to reduce the foamy look as good as possible. To get more travel range on the rudder, I had to sand a new angle into the vertical stabilizer. It gives the rudder more area to move. The new angle of the rudder is around 55 degrees, which is perfect. I also wanted to do this modification for more travel of the rudder, because on RC Scrappy, identical to full scale Scrappy, the tailwheel is not connected to the rudder and not connected to the rudder servo. The tailwheel is spinning completely freely, 360 degrees. If you don't have enough rudder movement, you will be in trouble with taxiing the plane. So I wanted to have the maximum possible travel range for rudder to make sure that I can taxi the plane well also on grass fields. The modification I had to do on the elevator to get these 55 degrees of travel on the rudder is that I had to cut off a bit of the center part of the elevator to give the rudder more space. For this I cut it a bit off with a hobby knife and used the Dremel to cut off the plastic area. Then figured out a loose glue spot of the plastic part on the elevator. So I took some odorless CA glue and glued this plastic part perfectly on the foam. Like this I also come closer to the center area look of the elevator of full scale Scrappy. This is a straight line not a round line so like this I have also the straight line look and at the same time I support the rudder to make these 55 degrees possible. To get more travel on the elevator I had to uh, increase the gap on the vertical stabilizer on the fuselage to give the center part of the elevator more space for this I also sanded the foam to a bigger gap like this. Uh, I also have around 50 to 55 degrees of uh, travel range on the elevator. Then it was time to make the stabilizer bars. For this I used one millimeter carbon plate and nylon rod ends which are actually super strong. They look pretty weak but they are really strong. With this I built up the whole uh, stabilizer bars. First I had to measure and mark all the positions of the mounts on the stabilizers. Then draw the shape of the mounts on some carbon plates, on one millimeter carbon plates cut out the raw shape of the mounts, sand them down to the perfect shape, also drilled 1.5 mm holes into the mounts to install the rod ends on the mounts, then cut all the slots for the stabilizer mounts into the fuselage and the stabilizers. I simply did this with a hobby knife and then glued in all the mounts into the foam again with using odorless CA glue. This glue is pretty slow CA glue. The advantage of this slow CA glue is that you have some time to adjust the position of your parts you glue into the fuse launch or whatever. And like this you're not in a hurry to measure the exact position you need to have for your part and then you can let it cure. Like this it's pretty easy to work with CA glue. For the stabilizer mount I installed on the fuselage. I sanded the sharp edge to make it easier to push it into the fuselage and on all the mounts I sanded the center area where I put on the glue, sanded it with 80 grit paper to give the CA glue more grip.
Then I increase the holes of the rod ends a little bit. They are around 1.9 millimeters stock and I drilled them up to 2.2 millimeters. Like this, I was able to make the pins of the carbon bars a little bit uh, wider and a bit stronger to handle the forces on the bars. Then cleaned all the excess from the rod ends and used the file to adjust the diameter of the mount holes with a round file to make sure that the rod ends fit perfectly with no play on the mounts. Then it was time to make the stabilizer bars itself. I drawed the shape onto one millimeter carbon plates, cut all the bars out of the plate, sanded the bars down to around 8.5 millimeter width with 80 grit and 240 grit sandpaper. Then cut them all to the right length and drawed and designed the end parts, the tips of the bars and also cut them down, sanded them down, filed them down to all the exact fitting shape for installing them into the rod ends. Also for this installation I used the otherless slow CA glue so I was able to put the rod ends on the bars, install the bars on the plane and was able to adjust the angle of the bars to have the exact same position of all four bars to make the installation look perfectly clean. So this is it for the current progress on my RC Scrappy build. I'm really happy so far. Next steps will be about the wings. This is pretty exciting too because there will be modified flaps and ailerons and also the shape of the wing will be changed so thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked the video. See you in the next one. Happy flying. Bye bye.